five, four, three, two, one. Welcome back. Okay, are you guys ready to rock the world? Are you ready to rock it out? So what's gonna happen next? We're gonna hear back from all of you and we're gonna begin our transition to tomorrow, which is you know, our big day, right? Tomorrow's when we really start looking forward. But we're gonna hear back today after all of our conversations. And just so you know, my charge is timekeeper. Each of your groups are gonna have five minutes. So at four minutes, I'm gonna give you a yellow card. <laughs> When you're done, I'm gonna hold up this red card. Why am I gonna do that? Because I was inspired. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you what I was inspired by. I was walking around, eavesdropping. I don't know if y'all, some of y'all saw me eavesdropping. But I heard a couple of things, so arbitrarily, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull these out and I'm not gonna attribute them to anyone. First thing I heard, Anglo Western Theater is Arthur Miller, Tennessee Williams, and those other guys. People go to the movies, they do all these things. I mean, how much do people spend on soccer? Yes. <laughs> there are tremendous stories written from state to state. Hopefully, when I'm too old for this, there are 10 other people willing to do it. <laughs> so I'm gonna leave you guys with that. Group number one, please step up to the mic. conversation around our relationship to the regional institutions. Um, you know, a, an image that was often described, uh, an image that was used to describe the regional people was a castle, a kind of castle on the hill, right? Um, and we found that to be a very powerful kind of image. Um, and we had a lot of uh, conversation around how we negotiate our relationship and how artists negotiate that relationship between doing their work and wanting to be in this castle. Um, but we uh, felt like we want to shift the paradigm. We want to change the paradigm. We um, also had a really great conversation around how are we constantly analyzing our value to these institutions. I turn it over to Karen. So we're making a declaration. Whereas we realize that we are the protagonist of our own lives, that we are the lead characters of our own stories, the camera is shifting. We're no longer the maid photobombing in the background. We're moving it to the center, and we need to own that. Mm. And whereas it is healthy and good for playwrights to aspire to be part of the American theater canon, and whereas it is healthy and good for designers and directors and theater makers of all stripes in the Latino world, to aspire to be represented in the regional theater, and whereas it is lovely and good to know as a young, as an early career artist, a mid-career artist, or a late career artist, that you will leave your legacy for those who come beyond, behind you. Whereas we believe the Latino theater community is a thriving community and actually has a healthy ecology represented uh, with individual artists and institutions, whereas we believe we have powerful origin stories individually and collectively. And the extent to which we are naming those stories, saying them loudly and saying them often, is the extent to which we are going to build that legacy, leave that legacy, and forge the path ahead. For example, there wouldn't be an Evelina Fernandez without Teatro Esperanza. Mm -hmm. There wouldn't be a Diane Rodriguez, a Quinan Valdez without Teatro Campesino. Mm -hmm. There wouldn't be a Cruz Acevo without Cornerstone. There wouldn't be a Richard Montoya without Culture Clash. There wouldn't be a Cambio Tirado without Repertorio Español. There wouldn't be a Nabel Lopez without Gala Hispanic. 
and there wouldn't be a Tania Saracho without Teatro Luna. <laughs> the tools we do have. And the truth is that we have the tools to build whatever castle or whatever house we want to go forward and live in and so on. Done with the metaphor. Yeah. Good one. Well, it looks like group number one really set it off, so I hope group number two oh, damn. is, uh, there's a good follow-up. Group number two, you ready? Yeah. All right, give it up for group number two. Group number two. Group that was made in rehearsal, and not listening to anybody. I don't know about this group. Starting over there. Okay, so we had a very, a very interesting rambling discussion that was about marketing, and we talked about development, and we talked about kind of everything in the whole world about about all our, 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 our world that we live in. And we talked about networking, networking weather and how, how important that was and how to build certain things. And we came up with a metaphor. Uh, and we are going to present our metaphor in a very physical way to you. I do need help. We want to do the Marcha Zacatecas, right? And so I can get, we're going to get it started. But you guys, people know it, right? Sing it, Joyce. One, two, three, four. Da, 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 da. Racialized, minority. 
minoritarian groups that have a narrative history of our theater, and Latino theater doesn't really have that narrative history. So what we were talking about is making sure that we can write a history that's accessible for everyone, that archives our history and realizes that it's, it's 500 years before the 1960s, you guys, that we create performance in this country. And one thing that we're very dedicated to is that moving 500 years back actually forces us to acknowledge indigenous and African roots in our culture and performance culture. <laughs> but I'm about to find out. <laughs> Just one kick line. One kick line from us, the scholars. <laughs> So just real quick, uh, he now reminded me to uh, remind us in terms of the composition of these groups and how they were configured initially. So at first we had the regional theater group. Uh, secondly, we had the culturally specific groups. And uh, that third group was scholars. And as uh, you know, someone said, they performed with their brains, right? <laughs> okay. So uh, we have group number four coming up next, and I'm going to ask group number four to say who you are in terms of your configuration. Okay, group number four, join us. We're the independent artists. Financial support. <laughs> How do we move forward without leaving ourselves behind? The importance of The first that we were passionate about was our story is the American story. 
something we talked about this said earlier, that we need to um, recognize that there's a paradigm shift that's occurring right now, and uh, that it's time to own our power and to find power in ourselves as delegates to the larger community and to honor our art. But we are the mainstream, we are the American story, and we leave that story. Secondly, we're, we're, we're multi-generational, and we wanted to talk about how we build bridges across generations, honoring those that came in the very in the beginnings, at least, as, at least according to this calendar, this timeline, recognizing the wounds that uh, were uh, 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 what happens to you when you get a wound. You what? Scars. 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 The scars and wounds that were kind of that people have from along the way, and how can we reach back and honor los veteranos, the playwrights? the master playwrights and heal them, and how can the master playwrights um, stay in long enough so that people coming up recognize that there's room for us all. Uh, and that we talked a lot about the conflict between gentle subversion and self-sabotage. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. that, that now is the moment to form friendships and alliances to subvert organizational structures and to recognize, as Julianne so, point, so brilliantly pointed out, that we often sabotage ourselves. Now is the moment to take power. And with that, I'm going to ask each of the artists in this line to mention one word <coughs> that comes from their heart that came out of our conversation. <laughs> <laughs> But it's actually legacy. Sisters. Love. Sanctity. Sanctity. Responsibility. Thank you very much. Group number six. Go six. Y'all deck. Group number six. We need to know what the issues are and as a group find out how we can address that. 
Uh, we need to find power in collaboration in our community, both locally and internationally. Uh, this is a really great chance uh, for us to kind of meet who's around and see who we can work with. Celebrate our abundance, because we are obviously a very abundant group. Uh, we need to uh, assess where we are in relation to where we were in 1986. Are we reinventing the wheel? Are people that are starting companies now starting companies in innovative ways, and are we supporting innovation? Um, where are we going? When we meet in 30 years, what will we say? We're going to meet before 30 years, but just kind of using us. Upping the quality of Latino work, but really gaining an understanding of uh, why we do what we do and how we do it. And then uh, there was the issue of visibility, talking about the need for visibility. And in that came uh, an idea that Olga Gerai offered, which I think is really great that we all kind of uh, latched onto, which was uh, finding a supported amount of money that uh, can allow small companies to join organizations like TCG uh, to help defer the, or defray the costs of, uh, of membership to meet more people like us and uh, more models uh, that we can learn from. No, no. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's breathe, breathe. <laughs> Good Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, number seven. Group number seven is coming up next. We're going to give you two mics. It's a big deal. Extra production value. Everybody say, hey -o! First of all, we have identity. Everything we do, understand what we are using. The we must break it down and have a new time of exclusivity. A break it one time like this, so we can break it. The intersectionality, everything that we've created, everything we can't be boxed into the normal type of action. We have to break down what it is to be Latino and expand it. And on a different level, understand it's really kind of obvious. We need to try to cultivate and build a whole new audience. 
That comes from building communities and rappers, connecting all the plays and making some plays that matter. The people all connected every time we try to rock this, but unfortunately we have to deal with all the economics and all of that stuff. Usually it's kind of rock shit. So many dope teatros, but so little access. That's guaranteed what we do and keep it clean. Thank you so much, Team 7. These are our three teams. I should have went last. For real. That's a rap that I would buy. I'll write the check tomorrow. Okay, uh, group number eight. Last but not least, give it up for group number eight. Remember to identify your group. All right, come on. You can get on stage. Don't be afraid. That's been happening all day. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so, so, I'm sure we were all listening actively during those presentations as a group, right? All of us were, yes. So, what we're gonna ask as we come to a close this evening is to just uh, kind of, what did you hear? during the course of our presentations. What, what just themes, and hope. again, just a, a, a raise of the hand, and, and then I'll point out in a shout out. Yes. Hope. Hope. Orgullo. Orgullo. Leadership. Leadership. Dedication. Dedication. Legacy. Legacy. Esperanza. Esperanza. Economics. Economics. Ownership. Ownership. Power. Power. Hunger. Hunger. Responsibility for the future. Responsibility for the future. So let's end it right there. Oh. Cariño. Cariño. Let's, uh, mm -hmm. This is good because tomorrow we're going in. We're going to need some cariño for each other. <laughs> right? Go to that. And, and some, some hope for the future because that's going to be our focus. And um, we want to take this energy, bottle it up, right? And uh, preserve it for tomorrow uh, as, we, as we go into the big day. And, and uh, I'm going to ask that Olga come and uh, take us home and close us out through the course of the evening. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Olga, I love you. And uh, I know you used to do this. But I'm going to Olga out here. So thank you. She's a brother. I think we've identified group eight. <laughs> Thank you so much for the day. I have a little bit of housekeeping. Uh, a couple of special treats, maybe? Uh, ooh, I know. All right. Um, forgive me, we got notes all over. Tomorrow, we start at 9 a.m. Si se puede. Tomorrow morning, there's a city parade for a little team no. that won the World Series at some point around 10 o'clock in the morning. However, it's expected that two million people will descend upon the commons, not our commons, but the Boston commons about two blocks away. I mean, it, and the point is that because it's a lot, they actually may descend upon our commons. And so what we're asking is that you please think about getting here at 8.30. So plan for 8.30 as opposed to 9, because you, we may find roadblocks in our walking here. We may, we may be perfectly fine, but we may find roadblocks. We may have to reorient. Take a look at your map. Your map uh, to get from the hotel to here is in the, uh, in the book. And just, you know, so we, so we can start at 9. But we just we know we have, 
We have a huge parade happening. Uh, it's celebration. Go Yankees. Oh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you go. <laughs> right on. Um, please do us the favor uh, to clean up after any stuff that you see lying around. The housekeeping, aside from this, is us. And so if you could please support the, the keeping the house clean, that'd be awesome. It just is less work for all our volunteers. Thank you, and for Jamie, to be honest. Um, <laughs> no, really, that's not that just, come on. Yeah, let's be honest. Okay, um, we would request that the people who are the plenary speakers tomorrow morning, because that's what we start out with is a plenary. And you know who you are, please arrive here. We did say 8.30, but at the latest, really aim to check in with us at 8.45, because there's some tech stuff that we'd love to run through with you. Thank you. And the last thing I have to say is that um, today is a special day for many people in the Latino community because it's the first day of Dia de los Muertos. It is Dia de los Angelitos. The dia, that's the day that celebrates those niños, the children who have died, too young. And I was reflecting on this and thinking about us as a group of children. And I mean that in the best way, the childlike way, the way in which you've so far approached this work with so much openness and trust and throwing ourselves into it wholeheartedly. And, and this past thing was an expression of that. And, and thank you for that. But just that this is, this is the first of Dia de los Muertos and we're honoring los angelitos and thank you all for being angelitos. A funny thing happened on the way to the convening. <laughs> <laughs> there I was. Um, no, a press release was created and translated and sent out across the country to announce this event. It reached Boston City Hall. Boston City Hall said, wow, that's really curious. We'd like to honor that in a way. Can you write something up? And so Lala Grivas and a few other folk participated to write a document that will now be read by Sandra Delgado. Proclamation. Whereas the Latina, Latino community is growing rapidly and creating positive impact in Boston and around the nation, and Latina, Latino theater is a prism through which communities view the multicultural qualities that support understanding and unity among all peoples. And whereas the Latino, Latina Theater Commons, founded in 2012, is a new platform for Latina, Latino theater artists and advocates to support and nurture the stories of Latina, Latinos on US stages, and is already recognized as a vital force in American theater and endeavors to fulfill its promise to reshape the narrative of Latina, Latinos in the US, and whereas the Latino, Latina Theater Commons chose the city of Boston as the site for its first national gathering, inspired by Boston's history as a city of change and innovation, and supported by the hospitality of HowlRound, a center for the Theater Commons at Emerson College and the Doris Duke Charitable Foundation, and whereas Latina Latino theater artists have a centuries-long history of contributing major works to world theater, and 21st century Latina Latino theater artists are carrying on that tradition now. Therefore, I, Thomas M. Menino, mayor of the city of Boston, do hereby proclaim Friday, November 1st, 2013, to be Latina Latino Theater Day. <laughs>
Okay, last thing. Last two things. One, thank you, Jaime. We have a copy of the proclamation for everyone on your way out the door. And thank you, Boston, city of Boston, and the mayor, city of Boston, for this incredible honor. Truly appreciate it. Boston strong. Right on, right on. Okay, and finally, yes, eat. I'm sorry, here we go. Dinner. Dinner will be provided by Petit Robert Central. Oh, okay. Mais oui. Oui, oui. <laughs> um, maps are in your program, but we're gonna walk over together. Please let's leave pretty soon so we can rearrange for tomorrow. Wine and beer available on us. Thank you, Howl Round again, as is dinner. See you there, thank you.